Hi, this is Rob, and you're at Longevity Learning Lab, and I'm going to show you the Longevity TIG Well 200SX. And this is a good welder for the beginner or the professional. And what it is, you can TIG weld, and you can also stick weld with this. And it's really versatile, really light, and uh, really easy to set up. And a lot of people think that because it's digital, that oh my goodness, you know, it's going to be hard to set up. Self-explanatory and it comes with the owner's manual anyway. But more on that when we get ready to weld. First I'm going to show you what we're going to weld, and it's going to be mild steel, which is a high carbon steel, very bendable steel. And it's in almost anything you can think of that's just everyday kind of metal, like this, or shelving, or anything. And uh, what it is, there's different positions and different stick weld rod to go ahead and weld it up and I'll show you how to do that. And first we're gonna go into the board and I'll show you the positions of the welding and the type and thickness of the material we're gonna use. We're gonna be doing mild steel. And uh, mild steel is a, a high carbon steel and it's pretty much in anything you could think of structurally. Nothing uh, too extreme when they, when they put it in a foundry and it's, it's processed. Um, anything's made out of mild steel. The fan over here, the, the chair you're sitting in, and uh, the thickness of the steel and what you want to weld, that's when you come down to the currents and the heat. And then the types of welds, for instance, is a fillet weld, the butt weld, and a lap weld. And you can see where I got the little blue setup, that's where the beads would be. And then when you want to do a pipe welding, that's an orbital, they call it too. And that's tricky, we'll get to that later. So, with DC current, is a direct current and it's going in one direction each time, okay? Now, AC current, which we're not gonna be covering now, is an alternating current, it goes back and forth. So, what we'll do is we'll get some material and get you set up on the machine that we're gonna be using. Okay, we're gonna be using the Longevity 200SX TIG weld, but we're gonna be using the stick setting, okay? Now, to turn it on, the switch is here in the back, towards the bottom, and we're gonna keep it, the range probably around 60 to 70, okay? And what do we have here? We got it 72. So we just go over here to the welding current and turn it right about there as close as we can. Doesn't that be perfect? A little high. That's okay to start with. We can always adjust it because when we tack the part together, that's where you can get the feel of it. And so let's go ahead and tack something up. Okay. Now we're going to do what I was saying earlier, the fillet weld. And what we're going to do here, and it's a T-shape like I had on the board, and we're just going to run our bead across here on the seam. And I'll, I'm going to end up turning it around so I can weld it, and then you'll see how it's done. Okay, I get the arc set up. I'm going to drag the rod, making sure the puddle flows up into both sides. you got to watch out for undercut. That's when the amperage comes in and the bolts come in. And just watch that puddle. Don't, don't push the rod in too far. You want to keep that arc fairly constant. Depending on the rod you're using, I'm using a 6010. You want to whip it back and forth. Just like you're stacking coins. Watch that fill in and then go to the next whip. Fill in and then the next whip. Now the fillet weld is different than the butt weld because with the butt weld you've got the bevel on both sides and you're filling in the groove. Here you've got the flat angle piece and the right angle piece. Okay I got my T weld and my lap weld and then my lap weld and my T weld. Now they're both actually a fillet weld but you can see the difference, how they look. And that's our fillet welds right there. Okay, now I've got the, the butt weld tacked and beveled, and we're ready to run the bead. Okay, I strike the arc, and I make sure I get a good enough puddle so it goes side to side on the, the bevel. I just go nice and slow and just watch that puddle so each sides of the bevel flow up to the top of the material. 
and I use a, a whipping or an oscillating motion and making sure the slag does not flow back towards my stick rod. I'm just watching the puddle, letting it flow, and keeping that arc in a steady light. Remember to keep pushing the arc, the electrode in, but not too much, and that'll push the, the, the material, the, the molten metal, up through your bevel. That looks pretty good. Okay, that well didn't turn out too bad, a little cold, but because I have that bevel in there, we're gonna end up grinding it flat anyway, and you'll still have that st structural strength so we clean it up a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and let it cool down so otherwise it doesn't really twist on you. And then we'll come back with the grinder and we'll grind that flush, and then it'll clean up and it'll look nice. It'll look like one piece of steel. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll do that now. Okay, now I'm just about finished grinding it, but I got a little bit more to do. But I'm just gonna knock it down just a little bit, get the slag off of there, just clean it up a little bit, nice and quick. Now there's different grits on the soft pad that you can grind it with. I'm using a 60 grit right here. Uh, ideally, if I used what they call a hard pad, that would really dig down into the metal, but we don't need to do that right now. So I'm just kind of cleaning it up, knocking little dingle balls off there, and any other little stuff. Well, that's it. I showed you what we needed to do. And uh, if you have any questions, go to our other website for the tips and tricks. And uh, that's it. We'll see you next time.